What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm joined by Dave Fallows, who is a photographer, retoucher and Wacom ambassador. And today we're gonna to run through how to set up your Wacom Pen tablet. So Dave, you brought along the Intuos Pro. This is the Intuos Pro Medium. Uh, this is Wacom's biggest selling product of the pen tablet range. And we're gonna look at how you set that up. So first and foremost, you get this exciting new package. You open it up, you get your tablet. What do you want to do? What would you want to do? Plug it in. You want to plug it in. Well, first, what I want you to do is go to the Wacom website, download the driver. You go onto the website, wacom.com, download the driver. That will install the Wacom desktop center, which is the controlling software and interface for all of the Wacom branded products. So I have already done that. So awesome. here's what I made earlier. Great. <laughs> uh, we'll just go ahead and we'll plug this one in. The first time you plug it in, it will take you through a setup. It will ask you whether you're left or right-handed, so changing the orientation. I'm left-handed, which means I have the keys on the right so that I'm not leaning on them when I'm working. If you're right-handed, you have it the other way around, obviously. Um, once you plugged in, you're up, you're up and running, you're set. We've got no mouse now. We're, we're ditching the mouse. We're gonna use the pen. The pen is our input device. So where I move around on the tablet, it's going to correspond and map that to the screen as well. So anything within 12 millimeters of the surface is active. So the pen will then track, the mouse will track and follow. There are four marks on the tablet here, which denote the corners of my screen. So if I go up to the top right-hand corner, immediately I'm at the top right-hand corner on there. What we really commonly see with people using these for the first time is uh, they try and scroll it like a mouse. Right. But it doesn't, it maps to your screen. Yeah. So when you try and scroll like a mouse by moving it across, all you do is bring it back to the same start point that you started from with the first yeah. stroke. So really important, just have a look on screen, familiarize yourself with the up, down, left, right. The other really important thing is squaring it up to yourself. If this is at an angle, if you've got your intuos at an angle, then away from you, which would be up on the screen, is now actually at 45 degrees. Mm. So that confuses the brain somewhat because your parallels aren't running in sync. So you need to be parallel, you need to be straight. Being a left-hander, I set it slightly off to the left-hand side. So it's in a natural position for me, I'm not reaching across. If you're reaching across, then again, your arm's coming round, it's at a strange angle, and up and down is actually a sort of 45 degree motion rather yeah. than up and down. So just offset it, if you're right-handed, just have it slightly to the right, left-handed slightly to the left. And then just try and work your way around the screen and familiarize yourself with the movement to start with. As you touch and make contact with the surface of the tablet, that is the same as a click on the mouse. So if I just go down and do a click on here, oh, just touching the buttons there, click on there, or click 100%, I can then move around and it's nice and easy. So you'll see there actually that I'm in the select mode in Lightroom here, and I push this bottom button, and these are the express keys, and that bottom one is for panning and scrolling. So I push, and you'll see that the cursor changes. If I hover my finger over, we get the menu come up, and it tells me what these shortcuts are mm. going to do. So if I hover over there, that comes up, but if I press, you see the cursor actually change from a pointer tool to the hand tool, and I can move around. Ah, oh, okay. So these are configurable for yourself to um, for use your most commonly used tools. Um, so I have this set for the space bar. Uh, I use adjustment brushes a lot in Lightroom. So I have this button now set, the second one up for the adjustment brushes. The third one up I've set for radio, uh, gradient filters, so I can just do a gradient filter. Oh, and wow. I've, I've got really quick shortcuts to those tools just through the three nearest keys to my, my dormant yeah. hand, if you like, the, the hand that's just sitting doing nothing because I'm doing the work left-handed, I've got really quick access. It means I don't have to keep reaching for the keys yeah. and I don't have to keep sliding around and going all over the screen to go and choose the different menu items. I've actually got quick shortcuts for those there. That's awesome. And again, those are controlled through the desktop center. You can go in and you can customize and configure those. So if we come in and look at the Intros Pro and I go down to Express Key Settings, that loads. Here are, is a layout showing the exact layout that I have on here. And we wow. can go in and we can create uh, on here, let's just say I want this to be a keystroke. And let's just say I want to make that, let's put Q. And I'm gonna give it a name and we will just call that uh, healing. And so, okay, to that. So now if I just come out of here and go back into Lightroom, uh, if I press that top one now, I immediately switch to my healing tool. 
That's it's really handy. Really, really useful. Yeah. What we find, some people really struggle with this to start with. Um, and you can, in fact, in the, the control center there, in the same way, go into your settings and the express key settings. You could, if you wish, disable these here as well also. So if you find that you're coming across and you're, you're clicking them by accident while you're familiarizing yourself with it, turn them off, come in, these do nothing. So none of these keys are working now, I've just disabled them. That's so awesome. in its most simple form, I'm just using it as a, a pen input tablet that maps to the screen. But when you're retouching or doing any work in here, whether I'm playing with sliders, let me just make that fit to screen quickly. Uh, well, let's do a quick edit for this, for example. Let's go in and um, let me just say, I want to select the sky. Lightroom does a really good job of automatically detecting the sky. It shows you in uh, Lightroom there the mask that you're, you're applying to there. I can now go and I can make changes to this sky. And in fact, I know there is detail up there in some high cloud up there, which I can bring in. Let's just bring the saturation of that down just a touch. So I'm just bringing a little bit of information back into that sky, quick and easy. And all I did was move the sliders, click to touch, you click. So click down, move the slider, and you're gonna then use that exactly the same way as you would if you were clicking with a mouse. Wow. So in terms of setup, Super quick, super easy. Super quick. Download the driver, install the driver, plug yeah. it in. It will walk you through the setup wizard uh, and you're up and running immediately. Amazing. Absolutely. So in terms of setup, that covers kind of everything you need to know about setting up something like the Intuos Pro we've got here. You can check out a link for the Intuos Pro down in the description of this video as well. So you can go and check out all the spec and all that kind of stuff. Otherwise, look out for more videos with me and Dave. We're going to be talking about loads of stuff to do with Wacom tablets, Wacom displays as well. Loads of stuff about how to use them, best ways to do it, all kinds of things. So we'll see you soon and thanks very much, Dave. Thank you.